Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, Natalie is here from Tracia C International. So for today's episode, this is in celebration of Women's Week. We are featuring one of our um, successful learner who have completed the Nibosh International Diploma and would like to share her journey and how she have accomplished the course and how it actually have impacted his, her current workplace. With us is Ms. Tende. Hi, Tende. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Great. Um, if you yeah, you have if you can um introduce to us, um, who is Tende and how everything started, how your journey in health and safety actually have started. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Butubachete, and um, I'm Zimbabwean. So um, a few years ago. Yeah, I came to UAE three years ago. Okay. Then um, after some time, I think after two years, I started my journey with uh, QSHE, QSHE International in Nebosh. And um, my reasons for taking up um, health and safety, I think they progressed from my personal, they were actually personal at first. Because mm -hmm. um, way back, I remember... I come from a very big family. Okay. I have like nine siblings. Mm -hmm. and you're, um, you're a native I come from which country? Oh, Zimbabwe. Which one? Zimbabwe, okay. Yes, right. Zimbabwe. So I come from a very big family. Mm -hmm. And growing up, only my father was working. Mm -hmm. So we had a one income household. So I think when growing up, I remember when I was around in grade nine, grade 10, mm -hmm. there was a moment, I think, in my father's workplace, because he was a technician in one of the manufacturing companies in my country. So there was an incident that, that resulted in him almost losing three of his fingers. Oh. So after being hospitalized, he has to come home and heal for some time. So I, I really didn't understand why we were just seeing him at home for, the, for those weeks and what. Then I think after some time, because in my country, when you go to school, if you don't pay your tuition, sometimes they'll be like calling your names like, ah, Tinda, you didn't pay up your fees. Yeah. Go back home and remind your parents. Then Natalie, you didn't pay up your fees. So it so happened one time that I was called up mm -hmm. and they told me, go and remind your parents that your fees is pending. So I went back home and he's still home. I, I didn't understand why he's taking up so much time. He's at home, why is he not going back to work? Because this is resulting in us not going to school. So um, after some time, I think as I grew up, I realized that whatever work environment, if we create a toxic work environment that ends up resulting in occupational health diseases or accidents, it's not just going to affect the next person that is going mm -hmm. home to you, but actually it's affecting everyone who depends on that person. Mm -hmm. So uh, what have pushed you to take Nibosh International Diploma to be specific. Like there's a lot of courses in the market, like like we all know. But why you have chosen the Nibosh International Diploma? What uh, what pushed you to do it? Or what inspired you to do it? Um when I was in Expo I realized um I was working as a technician. I was one of the inspectors. Mm -hmm. But only I was only inspecting MEP staff. So I realized that um, some areas when I was off shift, mm -hmm. we used to receive, because everyone we used to receive um, like complaints on one facilities management system that we used to receive complaints. So even if when I'm off duty, I'll just see some complaints online, right? So I realized that most of the complaints that were coming from my website was actually worked in areas that men were not allowed to go. Mm -hmm. So they, they used to come when I, I'm off shift because there were not really a lot of females in between the female safety officers, we only had male. So I think the final drive that pushed me to do Nebosh was that I realized that yeah, yeah, in some industries like construction and facilities, there are not really a lot of safety officers, especially women. So sure. I just said, ah, yeah, that's one opportunity. Mm -hmm. I can just go and try this one. Were you to um, utilize the information or the knowledge that you've gained mm -hmm. to your current workplace? How it actually mm -hmm. impacted your current workplace? Okay, um, my current workplace, 
I think um, like right now we do most of loan working. So I'm on a site because we actually focus on uh, maintenance or maintenance of facilities. So before I took um, the Nebosh diploma, I wasn't aware of a lot of other things, risks that come with everything that I do on a daily basis. Mm. But after I did the Bosch International Diploma, actually, you look at things from a very different perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? You look at things in a way that, you know, as much as you want, oh, okay, we have goals to achieve at the end of the day. We want to be productive, we want to be efficient. But if you are not, if you are not aware of the health and safety procedures and what you will just be running towards, you want to meet this target. And a lot of people, they don't care the effect of what you are meeting as you are working. So after taking the Boris International Diploma, you look at things from different perspectives. You, you realize that they, you need to have a balance between achieving whatever you want to achieve mm-hmm. and creating a safe workplace because you have to be a brother's keeper. We cannot be creating toxic environments in the name of we want productivity because it will cost us more at the end of the day. Yes, that's so, actually the best part of the course because it, the assessment is designed for you to think critically. Exactly. And like before, that, that's the advantage of the new assessment. And like the old syllabus before, where in diploma is actually more on a um, subjective type of examination. But now it's more in scenario based, wherein the learners are actually motivated or encouraged to think critically within the scenarios, scenarios which is actually what is really on site and something that they can they can really execute in their workplaces so that's really amazing that's that this assessment has brought into most of the learners do you also have um did you also have any hesitations like safety officer or a safety job is predominantly known to be done by men so it's like women are not usually having that perception that they can do it. So did you have any hesitations that you can actually um, be intimidated in the field if you're going to do the, the job which is predominantly done by men? By men? Have you, did you have any hesitations about that before? Yes, I did, honestly, because I just didn't choose to just... I, did, I didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to join um, this school and start doing I started doing my research at first. So I remember in in one of those research, I was asking out, and the only set of officers that I knew that were working on almost the same projects, all of them were men. So I asked one, one of them. At first he told me, you never pass it, you never do it, because mm-hmm. you're female. And for me, because of lack of representation, I, I, I've never seen a female skilled and safety officer in all those two years. So at first I was like, ah, I'm pretty sure I cannot do it because he said, he mm-hmm. said it's not a female zone. Then with time he was like, um, I asked another person, then the, then the other person was like, yeah, you can do it, but as a female, even if you pass the exam, it's very hard to get a job. Just leave it. Mm-hmm. There were like, you go to, there you go to like school, but eventually, you, you have yeah. received such discour- discouragements as well. And not a lot of times, <laughs> but everything turned out good as well. So, um, what were your struggles? How did you do the course, and what were your struggles along the way? <laughs> and that was a very interesting part. That was that was an exhausting day. <laughs> really? How how, how long did you finish? <laughs> How long well, um, it took you to finish the course? Actually, what I did is I registered with um with the school in August 2020. Right. I started doing my research around um, January 2022. Mm-hmm. Then one of the uh, I just asked one of the safety officers at work, he just said, you know what, whatever you want to know, just go on HSC website. Mm-hmm. So I think for a few months I was just going on the HSC website, just checking. Then I was like, ah, actually, whatever I'm doing, I just wanted to be aware of what I'm expecting and what. Then I made a list of schools, then I called them up. 
then um yeah because at that point i was like i wanted one school that would be actually flexible mm-hmm. because i was going to work so um, after consideration i, I, I approached you guys then i spoke to one of your guys he explained to me then i told him that right now i don't need a lot of money i need the cheapest one mm-hmm. i need it <laughs> the cheapest one i think that was decent learning Okay. So me, you've done what? the course on the distance learning. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Then he told me, you why don't you get in class? I told him, I cannot afford the class right now. Mm-hmm. Let me try it with distant learning and I'll write the first exam. If I don't pass, it's okay, I'll come and join the, the class. Then <laughs> distance learning was it was okay because we had a platform where we could actually ask tutors yeah, mm-hmm. when you're still reading and what, but it was just too much because I had a, a, a little background of health and safety. And for me, I took it up because of, I was like, I'm already in a technical field. So most of these things, I'm already seeing them every day. Mm-hmm. So rather, um, it's better to have knowledge because maybe I'm already exposed to a lot of these things that I don't mentor you. So you have but, done the distance learning and um yes. so, since distance learning is actually like a flexible mode of study wherein you can work and have your modules and have your have your course get started so after that you've done your first um examination so during the first examination um how was it like what was what was the what was your struggles and how you were able to overcome your first examination I um, honestly, your university is a whole different institution. To mm-hmm. be honest, yes, it was. Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't tough. Mm-hmm. Actually, it sometimes I would approach questions and I'm like, ah, oh, maybe they want to take a test with my mental health. Mm-hmm. Then, with time, I realized that um, your university. The exam, I really didn't need to think too much out of the box because I realized they try by all means, whichever industry you are in, they try to tailor everything to feel so that you feel that it's close to all. But can you advise the other aspirants who are who also doesn't have any knowledge in health and safety or doesn't have any prior knowledge in health and safety and wants to to embark a career in health and safety, what would you advise them? Like how, how, where, or how would they should start from it? Um, honestly, I think um, the first thing is um, when you're choosing our careers, you need something that you wake up to and you feel like, yes, I need to go into this every day, right? So the first thing is um, they need to be aware of what they want. Mm. They should just be familiar with what is included, concepts and what, what is in the health and safety. If they are interested in that, then they'll go on. Then also, um, in my journey, I realized that whoever is a startup or whoever is already in the field, I think I learned, I learned not to take everything that people say. For instance, I was discouraged so bad that right now I will be here talking to you. I'll be, I'll be in a whole different sector. So just believe in yourself, to be honest. I realized that way back, there the were a lot of departments that uh, in the industries that we, that even now are still male-dominated. But that doesn't necessarily mean we cannot try and do it at the end of the day. We can try and do it in itself, and in itself also. So whoever wants to embark on all this, trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth Don't it. people. Especially that people has the perception that health and safety officer is construction. That's why they have this perception that it's a male dominant uh, profession. But actually, in every industry, there's a safety officer. Hotels, restaurants, F and B, retail. There's a lot of health. And it's a must for every organization, exactly. especially for those organizations that 
they manage health and safety. They, like the moral and the legal aspects of their organization or of their business is what matter is what matters to them. So sure. yeah, it's a it's really an enlightenment for people who wants to embark in career in health and safety that not only men can do it. Women can do it for Women sure. Women can do it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Because yeah, it's a um, majority of the safety officers are men, and it's because of the unawareness of the public. But now that safety, health and safety industry is emerging, they have now the idea that actually women can also do it. And you are the best example for that. You're one yes. of the best examples for that. <laughs> that yeah, it's and it's I, true. And yes. um, how, well, how about for your future plans? Um, since you have already done the Debosh International Diploma, what's your next plan? Um, or what's your next goal that you <laughs> you want to meet soon? Soon, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question that's a good question okay um for me actually i realized that already in, in facilities management yeah i'm not just myself in one industry but my final point i think i want to be one of i want to be more familiar in health and safety more practical i think for a few years then later on, uh, I think I want to be in a position that inspires a lot of women, whether in practical or maybe in educational sector, I don't know, but something along those lines. Oh, that's great, that's great. And how about for your fellow countrymen back in Zimbabwe who also would like to work abroad, who would also like to explore opportunities outside the country, what would you, or what can you advise them? You know what? I, I, I usually say this to my young siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a saying in my country that says people should, should, people should learn to jump to opportunities as much as they jump to conclusions in all similar stuff. Whenever you're given an opportunity, take it. Sometimes you don't need to think too much. True. Take it. Yes, yes. Don't hesitate. Try. Because you know what? You never know if you excel if you don't try. True. So everything everything is worth trying. I I encourage anyone, everything is worth trying. Try. Then if you realize after some time, after some time that no, this, this is not me. I need this one. It's okay. You try again. You do, you do another thing again. Yeah. And also, like, people who doesn't have... They will always think, like, I want to be a safety officer, but I'm so hesitant to to have that or to... Like, I have the hesitation that I can take that go because I don't have anything. I don't have background. I don't have any degree. I don't have... Um, any um in i don't have enough educational attainment so that's actually most of the hesitations that we are we also have been receiving from most of the learners so actually it's it's a misperception also because if you want to be a safety officer you really have to invest on your education on your qualification so you can be a safety officer but you really have to take a step forward, which means you really have to take the course, you really have to invest on trainings, you really have to invest in education for you to be qualified and for you to meet the goal. So I think that's also one of the um, best thing that every aspirant in health and safety should consider. Yes, and um, I think also we should not limit ourselves just because we think we, you don't hear the good of things. Was I realized most of these schools, you guys, your payment plans. You, they, anyone, if you want to be a safety officer, you try s- slowly, you ease, you ease into the position very slow. There are uh, small certificates which are affordable. Try with that one. True. Just don't be sna- stagnant. Try with that one. Then you continuously improve yourself as you go. That's very, very because true. yeah, magic is not going to happen. That you're not just going to wake up with one diploma or one what. No, and just you can invest yourself. You can just slowly. wake up. You can just wake up and be a safety officer. 
Not everything. <laughs> in foundation. So, yeah, that's actually also true. So, yes, yes. Yes, I think um, that's all we want. We have for a limited time. Is there anything else you want to share to our viewers, or anything you want to advise them? Is there anything else you want to add up? Um, I think you mentioned a lot of that. I just want to say, people should just follow their dreams. Don't be stagnant because you think you cannot afford it now. Approach that school. Try. Don't. Yeah, don't listen to people because even if you do good, people are just going to say the very opposite. If you just believe in yourself, then you commit. Because honestly, success is you, then you commit, then you put the hard work. Eventually, you do it. You have attained your goal in the span of one year, which is actually actually excellent. Yes. All right. Tande, thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing your success stories with us. And hopefully this um, testimony of yours will encourage most of our aspirants in health and safety to move forward and also attain their goals to be health and safety officers. And also for women who are who is also in the same industry of who, um, most of the trailblazers in the industry. So yeah. Uh, it's a good awareness that pre- a predominant um, profession can also be done by women. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us and we hope to see you in the future and I hope also all your goals will be met. I hope you thank more you success. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you have so much, day. I hope you have a great day ahead. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.